Krampus from 2015. This is a film directed by Michael Dugherty, starring Adam Scott, Tony Collette, uh, David Kochner, Allison Tolman, MJ Anthony. And the IMDb plot summary, a boy who has a bad Christmas accidentally summons a festive demon to his family home. Um, this film is a horror holiday comedy hybrid. Um, and the reason why I put this on my list, uh, it's, it's a newer film that is now become in my rotation. Um, so it's not something I saw in theaters, actually, like Nightmare Before Christmas, not something I've seen as much as that film. Uh, but I did discover this on on VOD, and uh, for me, what this really does is, uh, in a in a way that is a, a in the vein of a horror comedy, through the vein of a horror comedy, it talks about how it's it's very easy to it forget the meaning of Christmas and just focus on all the stress, aggravation, all the negative things, um, which is something that is very easy to do during the times of the holidays too. And you kind of get that bah humbug feeling sometimes, just be like, God, I just want this all to be over because of the chaos in it. Um, and you know, you're, you're with a lot of family, you know, I'd go to, uh, you know, relatives houses or have people, you know, come over and, you know, just get all the Christmas shopping done. And there's always a lot of things to do. And that definitely can be very stressful. You're put under the same roof as a lot of relatives. And sometimes those can lead to be stressful situations too, where you're just sort of like, oh, like, I just don't want to be around, you know, people right now. Cause they're all just kind of stressing me out. Um, and in this film, the, uh, the young, uh, son in the movie, um, sort of similar to actually Home Alone, which is another Christmas movie, I guess, where he wishes his family was gone. Um, and, and because this is a horror film, unlike Home Alone, where they just leave him in a house and fly off to Paris, the a old Germanic demon comes and basically starts killing off the family members one by one um, as a curse that's placed over this family because this boy you know, wishes, you know, kind of forgets the meaning of Christmas to just focus on those those negative things. Um, so again, can relate, uh, to this sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and then try to remind myself like not to be that Ebenezer Scrooge and bah humbug piece. Um, but, uh, I think this, um, you know, this movie also focuses a lot on how sometimes you do feel like the holidays is a little bit of like just work or an obligation. Like in this film, both of the parents are like, fine, we'll take, you know, our relatives are coming again. Like we don't enjoy this, but like, we got to do it because it's the holidays. Um, and that again is easy to fall into that trap too. And forgetting the reasons why, you're you know, you're doing this in the first place you sh should love love these people and want to be around right. them and that's why they're coming home for christmas not because it's something that uh you just okay we just kind of have to do this um so that is something too again a trap that you can easily fall into um uh and yeah like i think the you know the horror stuff for what it is works really well like there's great creature designs good scares good death scenes things you want in a in a, in a horror film but with enough of that mix of fantasy and then holiday spirit i mean it's definitely there um, in, in this film uh, that uh, I think is important to, uh, you know, help just remind me of, uh, yeah, that this stuff can be annoying and, you know, be aggravating. You can wish your family to be gone sometimes, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, it is, you know, the, the holiday is a special time and you want to be around those folks. Like at the end of the film, like he's all back together with his family and learns his lesson that, um, you know, he should not have wished his family away. And the family actually becomes closer together too. you know, in the beginning, you can tell they don't really like each other very much. They bickering at the dinner table, but then because these monsters are coming, like some killer gingerbread men and presents that'll eat you, they have to kind of gang up. Um, and uh, the dad, Adam Scott, who was sort of judging uh, this uh, brother-in-law who was like the survivalist talking about guns and oh, I all this stuff. And you sort of look down upon him because of that. Now they're in a survival scenario. And it was like, oh yeah, no, I, I want, yeah. How do you do the guns again? We need to shoot these demons. So in, in a way, like the family kind of gets brought together as they're killed. Um, and uh, they're all each reminded of the true, you know, meat of the holidays, which, which is family. So yeah, I, I watch this film almost every year now. Um, it's kind of gone into my rotation and uh, yeah, it's just a fun horror comedy fairy fantasy fan fairy tale basically and that's uh that, that's krampus cool yeah i don't think i'd maybe i'd heard of this movie but i'd not watched it um so this was my first time watching it yeah i had a hard time with this movie. i could I, 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 you, I, I i'm not surprised to hear that <laughs> <laughs> i mean not the horror stuff is actually cool like um, oh really you like that but i think the rest of it I don't know. Like, so this is maybe a spoiler alert. So for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, you can mm -hmm. turn it off and then come back once I'm finished talking about this movie. But isn't the reveal that the whole thing is like a dream? It's not that it's a dream. It's point they, of view. No, it's it's that actually like um he 
so all the family members get killed um, in the film, and he actually sacrifices himself to save uh, his um, uh, one of his family at the end, so that Krampus, who's the you know demon who's cursed them, right. kind of goes away, and you think everything's okay, but actually, like you you never can take back this wish that he granted. So now Krampus has has the family trapped in like a snow globe, even though yeah they're happy and they're forever in the 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 uh, you know perfect christmas morning but they actually are not in reality anymore and they all are dead and they're in this i guess hell world that krampus controls I see. so it's sort of like a twist ending in the sense of actually things didn't work out and the kid did wish make this wish that did not actually get reverted even though he kind of got what he wanted in terms of this uh this nice family moment at the end of the film at least that's how okay. i that's how okay. i interpreted it that makes me a little bit more positive on the movie because the moment the whole movie shifted into a horror movie tone i was like please don't make this one of those movies where this turns out to be a dream oh <laughs> and then i was like oh shit this is exactly what this is and i was like oh gosh this is just silly well, it's, so it's more depressing than that it's not a dream like that I, I they're all dead i think is I how know. I well, but at least there's some sort of that's more interesting I oh, right. I see what you're saying. What you right, right. Said, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of that just feels very silly to me. So I think yeah. that was one thing that was sort of bothering me. And then, I don't know, this sort of thing of like, oh, the family comes in, like the cousin's family and everybody's like demonic and everybody's yeah. like that. Like I had the same thing with uh, what was the John Candy movie that you had on your list? Like that, of course, is Great Outdoors. Great Outdoors. From our like, summer that, episode. Yeah. It has some nostalgia and of course it's john candy so there's some mm -hmm. like adorableness to it and dan Aykroyd. worse than this movie with the way it's shot you know it's like a modern movie you mm -hmm. know digital movie like it could be a netflix film essentially mm -hmm. i don't know i i just there's something that's just been done so many times that it immediately kind of makes me tune out. I'm like, oh yeah, of course, all of you are annoying and bad, you mm -hmm. know, of course. Mm -hmm. And how come this one child is the only person who's sane in this entire family, which by the way is Pedro from It's Complicated, who's horrible in that movie, who's uh, Alec Baldwin's little son. Oh, really? The Bell's character, exactly. Oh, interesting. The lunatic oh. child as referred to by Zoe Kazan in that movie. So, oh, interesting. And, so I was like, I oh, didn't catch that. Yeah, it's like you're the only sane one, and then <laughs> the grandmother and oh, she, she she's German. Okay, I get that because they needed a Germanic thing. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It it was fine. Like I was I wasn't bored. So that's oh, I think, okay. Um, that's good. Yeah, uh, but wasn't into it. I actually like the horror stuff. Actually, I was mm -hmm. like, hey, this is good. Like this mm -hmm. is landing on on me. The production design. Uh, the special effects, all of that character design of Krampus, all of that actually worked pretty well. I just wish that maybe in the beginning of the movie, the way that set up the whole house mm -hmm. with all these characters, I wish that was maybe a little bit more grounded. Mm, I would have right, been yeah. way more invested in what is happening versus the moment you make just one person and then everybody else is two-dimensionally bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like, okay, you know, this is not real. So right. then nothing scares me after that because it's all not real. So I, then I look at, oh, good character design. I right. should not be thinking about that. I should be getting yeah. scared of uh, yeah. what's happening. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely fair. I mean, I think it makes it easier as the viewer to not care when these people die because yeah. they are so two-dimensional, which is, you know, you kind of get an enjoyment out of the deaths as opposed to like, because they all get killed essentially right. and it's like hard to at first you're like, oh my god like they actually killed that person like that's it's okay it's that kind of movie uh but because these characters you know have uh i don't want to even say flaws but they're very one-dimensional and like a cartoonishly negative right. sort of like an, these are the, the typical annoying relatives with nothing right. else redeemed them it is not realistic you're you're, you're totally right um but, but uh, I guess it is a B movie in sort yeah, of how yeah. I define B movies mm -hmm. that it's maybe that is the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also it was funny. I don't know if you watched Staircase, the HBO movie, mm -hmm. HBO series. No, uh, I, I know of it, but I've, yeah, I've not seen yeah. it. Yeah. It was like, oh, this was sort of the audition reel for Tony Collette for that, because there's a very sort of similar, you know somebody who's raging from the inside but is keeping like a polite exterior uh, it was like the same performance which was very interesting huh. adam scott looks good so adam yeah. scott is i love adam scott yeah, yeah. he's always very good he's yeah. yeah he's fantastic yeah tony collette actually does a really good job in this too i think that is what uh 
what helps me come back to the to this film a lot it's the performances of uh, of the actors that are really well done i mean maybe the other reason why that is kind of a one note thing is it is got that like grim fairy tale sort of vibe to it um which those stories are like every character is one dimension because that's kind of right. the point of like a fairy tale um and i know this is kind of riffing on some germanic folklore which i don't mm. know i don't have any uh german relatives um but uh maybe that's you know why they they did that in the film but uh yeah i'm not surprised you hadn't really heard of this i think the movie like I did not do well. It wasn't like a big hit, but it's starting to gain a little bit of momentum as a kind of a cult movie. That's how I uh, sort of stumbled upon it. And I was like, oh, that's actually kind of good. And each time every year I watch it, I'm like, yeah, actually this, you know, it's like pretty enjoyable. So it's something yeah, it's again, not like bad. I wouldn't yeah. say like, you know me, I would not finish things. Oh, I do. Even yeah. though you assign me to <laughs> things, but yeah, I finished yeah. this movie. I that's good. Proud of myself, even yeah. though apparently I missed the whole ending. So I don't know what I watched. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> cool. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.